Hello, welcome to Bike World and welcome to what seems like another new model launch for Triumph. I feel like every other week at the moment, I'm up here in Hinkley looking at beautiful shiny bikes in the showroom. It's really exciting and it's probably quite indicative of Triumph's fast pace model releases these days. There's always something new on the horizon. And one of the last times I was here with Stuart from Triumph, we were talking about the Speed Triple RS. Really exciting. I got to be one of the first people to ride it. And all that time, you knew this existed. Well, you know. You knew this existed. When I was saying, can we have a fairing and clip-ons, you were grinning away, and I had no idea why. Well, there you go. Let, let's get this straight straight away. This bike was always in the works from day one. When you started out on the 1200 speed triple RS, this was always there alongside, yeah? Yeah, it was. It, we, we always had the ambition to build the RR. It's an evolution. It's an add-on from, from speed, speed triple. It really takes it to another level, okay? So we've, we've looked at the market. We were um, quite sure there was an opportunity to bring a bike that isn't there now at the moment. We looked at top sports bikes, track focused, maybe a little too focused for some people on the road. We wanted to build a road focused sports motorbike. I mean, was there anything when you, when you guys were sort of initially sketching these out or initially talking about doing them, was there any bikes from, you know, obviously currently there's a couple, but from history that you look back with and went, look, there was a naked and a half fair, a bikini fair inversion. Was there anything that you looked back over the years and went, that worked really well, that's the vibe we want, or was it kind of, we were just going to do this our own way? No, I think it was, it was, we we're going to do it our own way. I mean, there's a, there's a really big tradition in UK automotive of taking top performance vehicles, adding more performance, more elegance, just making the ultimate, okay? So when, when you look at the Speed Triple RR, the first thing you see is elegance. It's got all that performance and it's got even more performance now with the electronic uh, suspension as well, the Yolian suspension. So it's got a lot more performance, but it, it really is elegant. And we knew we could offer that and get a bike that was really quite unique. That is one thing, like standing here looking around the bikes, they look like a sports bike, but they don't look like a sports bike, if that makes sense. And I mean that right. in the best way possible. Yeah. They're, they're as far removed from the full fairing MotoGP, World Superbike, BSB replica bikes. It doesn't look anything like them. It looks like, a few people have said it already, but like a contemporary cafe racer, but then you start looking underneath and it's, it's not a traditional parallel no, to an engine. It, it's actually got the performance too. It's, it? it's completely modern. Yes, that word cafe racer is valid. It's, it's part of our heritage, but this is, um, this is actually a modern, completely modern sports bike for the road. The, the cafe racer thing, I've mentioned it a few times chatting to guys earlier. Yeah. You can see everyone at Triumph's like, it's not quite a cafe racer because it's, you're keen to put across the, the fact that it's a legit sports bike for the road. It's not a heritage, vintage, retro, steady bike. It's a quick bike. I, I think it's quite reasonable, especially with our heritage, to call it a cafe racer. Ab absolutely, we do see that. Um, but this is a sports bike. It's a sports bike for the road, okay? But it is focused at the road, not the track. Really competent on the track. You've ridden the RS, yeah. um, get the electronic suspension, uh, get a more focused riding position, a little more engaged with the bike, and it's, it's perfect for the track too. So that, that's one thing I did want to speak to you about, the, the electronic suspension. So whenever you build a bike that's a really good road bike that's supposed to go on track as well, there's always a compromise to strike. With any road bike, there's a compromise to strike between comfort and kind of performance, road holding, body control, which is why electronic suspension has become quite prevalent. It's very good at covering a wider base. Has the electronic suspension on this allowed you to make the bike better at both ends or is it kind of, have you shifted the focus more towards track or has it actually grown? You, of course okay. you're gonna say yes to this, but has it actually no, it, grown it has. the feel of the bike? It's a completely different ethos, okay? It's a completely different philosophy to setting up suspension. There is fixed suspension modes included. So we've got three fixed suspension modes that are set up effectively for um, comfort, normal and um, sport, track, yeah. track use. Those can be adjusted. So you can adjust those further so they can be firmer or softer. Yeah, it's just objective based, just yep. quite, quite simple to understand and really easy to implement. On top of that, the suspension offers quite specifically braking support, cornering support and acceleration support. So now you can build a bike where you can dial in different suspension settings for every aspect of the ride. So with that system, before we bore everyone to death about suspension, there's three people over there that have fallen asleep already. <laughs> um, effectively, that 
suspension system is not just looking at the the, the, the wheel travel. That's looking at accelerometers. Uh -huh. That's yeah. looking at G-force. That's looking at the attitude of the bike. Throttle Angles are lean. Brake pressure. Absolutely everything. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything's integrated. And this is the way with electronic systems. Um, so, so yeah, you've got, you've got your throttle. We've got throttle maps. We've got traction control that's based off all the same inputs. But then the suspension's using sort of the throttle position as well now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's using brake pressures, it's using angle of lean. You know, it's, it's, it's really optimizing what you use your technology for and everything talks to everything else and does its job to make your ride as good as it possibly can be. I, for one, cannot wait to get out and ride these bikes. Guessing you've ridden them? Yeah. Personal choice, would you take, I think I know the answer, RS or RR? RR. RR every time. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks for talking to us, Stu. It's been really interesting to get a look around these bikes. The launch is imminent, so we will soon be riding them, putting them through their paces. And I actually said, when I first rode the Speed Triple RS, I said, Triumph, please, can we have clip-ons and a bikini fairing? You knew that you were gonna get one. So yeah, I was pleased to have guessed right, but yeah, pleased to actually see it now. And I'm hoping it meets my expectations. So here's a good question then. Why? Why build Speed Triple RR when you've already got a Speed Triple RS? Triumph have made it quite clear they're not going to build, they might be lying to me, but they say they're not going to build a 1000cc Hypersports Panigale competitor. So why are they having stuck with road bikes and naked bikes and making a really good point of doing excellent naked bikes? Where on earth does that come from? I've asked them and I've had a few answers and because we can, it's probably one of the good ones I've heard, but the feeling from Triumph is that the Speed Triple RS and the Speed Triple RR, they're not going to go into two different markets. They're kind of going for the same market, but this is for the people at the slightly sportier end of the market, and this is for the people at the slightly more sit up road bias end of the market. I think the hope there is that by bringing this out, some of those people who aren't quite ready to give up road race replicas will step onto this. And maybe some of the people that, you know, just fall in love with the looks of this bike. They're two very different looking bikes. And yeah, it's worked on me already. I've come in and looked at that and gone, no thanks, don't want wide bars anymore, I want that, because it, it does look very striking. Now, I haven't sat on this yet. One of the things I said when I rode this Speed Triple RS, I had an absolute blast on track on it and found that because it's a high performance bike, because it's powerful, with the higher bars and the more road bias foot peg position, I was wearing my arms out and I was hanging on the bars more than I wanted to be. Now that's naked bikes on track. That's what always happens. You get to a sort of certain pace where you're really pushing on the brakes on the way into a turn, they're great. But when you're trying to hang on to 180 odd horsepower, you need your feet higher and further back so you can push through your feet and your hands lower down so you're not set up being yanked on the bars and then getting all the wind blasts straight away. Furthermore, in the middle of a turn, when you're trying to get your body and your weight low down inside the corner, the handlebars are, are in your face. Now, this isn't supposed to be a track bike. It's good on track, but I definitely found the limit on track for me was the, the riding position, having to work around it. So I haven't sat on the RR. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that when I get on this, oh, I'm Valentino Rossi, brilliant. Immediately, yeah, you can feel that, that riding position is in a much easier place to, to ride fast and for performance riding on track. It's not as extreme as I thought it might be from the pictures. It doesn't feel like a old school, small Grand Prix bike with the bars tucked down low. I've still got my original Daytona 675 from 2006. This doesn't feel as extreme as that. It doesn't feel as, as focused. It feels like I could happily ride it around on the road and not be too uncomfortable. But what I do feel now is that with that little move of the bars and the, the slide back and up of the pegs, instead of coming out of the corner, wrestling with the bars and making them shake, instead of mid-corner being my wrist in my nose, I feel like now I'm going to be able to put my body exactly where I want it to go and do as fast a lap as I like. What sucks is that I've got to wait. <laughs> We've got the launch coming and this thing on track, that was great. I'm looking forward to pushing a little bit harder on this one and really getting to enjoy the new chassis. So whether you decide to go for, well, you can buy any bike you like, but if you're buying a Speed Triple, if you go for the RS, it's gonna be 15 and a half, get it now. If you're going for the RR, that's gonna be just shy of 18 grand for the base paint and then a little bit more each time you change the paint and add all the shiny accessories that no doubt you'll wanna add. They'll be in dealers early next year, early January. Um, you can put a deposit down now and I will hopefully be riding one in the next couple of months. So stay tuned and we'll tell you if it's awesome or not.